Yo, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to another second channel geography video. This is an episode series where we talk about geography and the world and stuff. And every single educational YouTuber that I've ever spoken to has this problem where the vast majority of topics that they ever research tend to go unused because when you're making YouTube videos, there's a certain length you need to fill, there's a certain amount of rabbit hole you have to dive down, and if you can't get all the way down there, or it doesn't fit that perfect length for a YouTube video, it means that you kind of have to throw the topic away. And this is something I do a lot, but I figured let's try something new. Let's do something I'm calling bits, little bits of videos that I haven't fully fleshed out and I don't know if I could but I really want to talk about anyway because they are fascinating and we're going to start by talking about Canada because everybody knows about the United States story and how it got away from the UK but you might not know that Canada was kind of just this story of mutual consent where a bunch of different uh, North American territories of the UK kind of joined together and made this union and in fact the latest uh, territory to join in 1950 something uh, was Newfoundland and Labrador. Newfoundland uh, was an independent territory as part of the UK that just decided to join Canada as kind of like a last ditch movement. They even considered joining the United States, which is wacky. And basically, uh, you know, when this joined uh, Canada, it brought Canada up to 10 provinces and three territories. So the reason I say this, because, uh, you know, it's a part of the UK moving to Canada is because there's lots of other parts of the UK you might recognize, um, including Bermuda, including, uh, you know, the Turks and Caicos, and, um, uh, you know, the Cayman Islands are three big examples that you're probably familiar with. And interestingly enough, each of these examples has a little bit of a history of maybe wanting to move into Canada. So, um, you know, let's take the Turks and the Caicos Islands. Um, this is the one which arguably got me furthest because in 1917, the Canadian Prime Minister at the time uh, unsuccessfully floated the idea of London, being like, hey, can we have those islands over there? And it didn't go too well at the time, but it wasn't the only time this was asked because, again, the uh, the Turks and the Caicos and the NDP even, uh, one of the major part uh, parties, uh, kind of concluded that Canada should encourage engaging with the peoples and governments of the Turks and Caicos Caicos Islands and the British government to have Turks and Caicos Islands become Canada's 11th province. Which sounds, you know, like that's just one of Canada's free political parties. But what about the fact that uh, one of the other ones, concerning the Conservative Party, uh, one of the guys was like, why can't Canada have a Hawaii? Which is the worst justification. But there are many, many moves from both the Turks and Caicos, uh, Turks and Caicos, sorry. And there are also many other moves from Canada um, that have kind of seen this. Even Jamaica, which you can't, you, again, Jamaica is such an independent country now. But, um, you know, at one point in time, it was was like, hey, one of the easy ways is we could perhaps join Canada. And again, if you if you dive into it, it's not just um, you know, the, it's it's not just uh, you know the Turks and Caicos which have moved in there. You can see how this has been an, a question with Bermuda. It's been a question with a lot of these territories. And although it would be a really hard thing, because here is the population of the Turks and Caicos. Um, again, you can see how Bermuda is not a huge amount better at sixty three thousand. Um, basically, there are small territories which would have about the size of a again Canadian territory, not a Canadian province. Um, um, which makes integrating them a little bit tricky on that end. Not to mention the geography difference between, again, Turks and Caicos Islands over here and the nearest Canadian province, which is Nova Scotia over here, would be about two and a half thousand kilometers or 1,551 be the tails, I believe is the uh, the, the metric, uh, the uh, imperial unit right there. But the fact is, Canada has almost gained a lot of, uh, you know, like, again, ocean, Hawaii-like territories. And I find that very interesting because, again, Hawaii itself is something I've, right, every time I dive into it, I'm like, how do we just accept that that's part of America again? And we just go, oh yeah, well, it's the 50th state. It's a state, so it's fine. But like, every time I look around Honolulu, I'm like, man, how is, how, how is this, you know, like, this, this is America, and that's, that's cool. I, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully visit at some point in my America trip. Um, that's, that well, my America, uh, move that is, uh, coming up in a few days now. Um, but yeah, it's still one of those things where I'm like, but, but, so like, what, what's going on here? And the answer is, well, you know what, America's going on there. But speaking of things that is going on in places, <clears throat> I am, uh, you know, currently, right now, as of the uploading of this video, but not the recording, in Turkey. So I'll just pretend I'm there right now, because video continuity doesn't need to exist. So I'm in Turkey right now, I'm in Istanbul, and prior to moving there, which is definitely not now, because now I am clearly in Istanbul, you can tell, because my green screen definitely traveled with me here. Anyway, so um, now I'm in Istanbul, and uh, one of the things you have to research is like, oh yeah, so the currency is devalued seriously recently, how much has it gone down though? Like, you know, what, what, do have prices, okay, so right, now, if you look at the, the kind of uh, chart, um, prices, the, the lira has gone real bad recently, so have prices matched that? And I uh, decided to look up the price for Big Mac as the standard uh, thing to work out what prices would be like, and I just found this TripAdvisor article. I hate TripAdvisor. 
I, no offense to TripAdvisor, no offense to people from the United States of America. Again, like like United Statesians and uh, generally can trust their opinions. But the sort of people who post on TripAdvisor are generally, you know, questionable. And here's a fun example. This guy from Morocco was like, Hi, I would like to know the price of a Big Mac in Antalya, Turkey. I would be grateful if you can provide prices for other burgers and for Burger King as well. And then this guy, who is from Brighton and Hove, that is admittedly the UK, asks why. Uh, and then the, the <laughs> Mr. Morocco man says, because I'll get hungry. And I just love this this exchange right here. This is this is clearly what we came here for. And then the answer is about 12 Turkish lira. But in the time since that, it's gone up to 22 because the Turkish currency free fell. And you know, I, let's let's switch it around so you understand a bit better. Maybe um, here is what one Turkish lira is worth: about 70 cents. Uh, on the dollar. Actually, look, it's more impressive to go the other way. So, um, here is what one Turkish lira is worth. About 1.4, uh, you know, 1.4, one dollar could get you 1.4 Turkish lira. And that's, you know, like, where, kind of where things stayed. It went between about 1.4 and 2, uh, roughly. But you were still getting, you know, pretty close to parity, or, like, relatively close, we could say, until you go a few years after that, and it's like, oh yeah, one US dollar will buy you 2.2 .2 Turkish lira. One US dollar buys you three Turkish lira. One US dollar buys you almost four Turkish lira, until you get to right now, where the standard rate, the kind of place that things are at, is about seven and, uh, to seven and a half. Like, that's the kind of area that it floats between. Uh, that means the currency, if you had your save it, life savings in Turkish lira and you wanted to buy things internationally, um, over the course of just 10 years, those Turkish lira, in terms of international currency, have become worth about five times less, which is staggering because Turkey has many problems that we see internationally, but we don't often think as hyperflation as being one of them, and maybe we should. Anyway, another little bit topic thing, because see how seamlessly we're moving between them, except right now, as I point it out. So um, let's talk about the fact that uh, you know the G7 is a, is a group you might recognize, but um, I, I'm just using this map because it's something I looked up recently, because I was like, you know what, I wonder, is it officially called the G7, or is it just the G8 minus Russia? I was like, oh, it's officially the G7. Like, we, it, it literally has just been pretended that it always has been the G7. Like, oh, I don't remember the G8. What was that? I That, that didn't exist. And if you look at all their, like, meetings, it's like, oh yeah, at one point, for some reason, we held G7 meetings in 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 Russia when they were a G8 member. What a weird thing. Anyway, just a little, little niche thing. But if you look at this map of the ma nations which are part of G7, which is the most, at the time of its founding, the most powerful economically countries, obviously lack of China makes it interesting. If you look, you're like, okay, there's Japan, there's Canada, question mark, weird inclusion, there's the United States, and then there's France, Germany, the UK, and Italy. And then the EU is represented there, which makes things weird because they're not really a country. And also they're already represented by four of the member states, the majority, but whatever. Um, but interesting enough, because France is a member of the G7, you'll notice how French Guiana shows blue on this map. French Guiana is a part of the G7, and so is, um, I think it's Reunion. Maybe it's Mayotte. I get the islands mixed up. But um, also so is this island right over here. What an interesting little thing, huh? Let's, let's, let's check. Let's just be sure. This right here is, as we can see, Reun Re Reunion. Uh, it's not Mayotte. How silly of me to get that confused. But yeah, you can see how um, these are just parts of France because that's how they are treated. They have the President Macron right now. They have the Euro as their currency and French citizens live there. But do French citizens really live in French Guiana? Like again, if you look on a map, by the way, I was looking at French Guiana and there's this supermarket called the Survival Supermarket, which maybe, maybe just to me, is a little bit terrifying. Like, why? It's opposite of Popeyes, which is really confusing now I think about it. Is Popeyes in France or is it just in French Guiana? Anyway, um, also Starbuds. <laughs> Did you see that? I need to get back to that. Whatever, anyway. So, French Guiana, really interesting place. Um, oh, I'm in Guiana regular. You're not sorry. This is embarrassing of me. Here is French Guiana. Uh, let's, let's throw you Cheyenne, the capital. Look, they've got McDonald's. People definitely don't get annoyed when I look at McDonald's on Google Maps, right? That is... If there's a fact I know, it's that you can look at McDonald's all day on Google Maps and not a single person will ever be upset. But um, yeah, so this is this is Cheyenne in French Guiana. Super interesting, or Cayenne. Uh, it's like the pepper. And um, it's a very interesting, uh, you know, country. But like, are they really French there? And I, uh, you know, like, there's, there's two ways you can work this out. You can look at the demographics or you can go into a random Google bubble sphere and you can look at the people and it's like, that they look vaguely French, but like not, you know, like, oh, are they French white people? Are they French uh, black people? Are they French South American people? Like Mexican, uh, you know, like, oh, 
so, you know, Brazilian looking uh, fellas, because they're very close to Brazil. And the answer, if you dive into their demographics, maybe you're not allowed to ask these questions, um, but the, the, the actual answer is like, huh, if you actually look into it, one, the population used to be tiny. It's still kind of tiny, only a quarter million people live there. And two, uh, the people there are technically French, but if you dive into it by not just uh, their nationality, you know, their passport, but you dive into it by their ethnic groups, you can see how it's mostly Creoles uh, or mulattoes, people of mixed African and French ancestry, um, which means that, yeah, they're not white, but they are French in large part. But then there's also a large Chinese community, which is kind of an interesting uh, little past thing. And then I was like, oh, yeah, you know, you, do you ever know that, like, there's a part of, um, you know, I was looking at Guyana, Georgetown, and you're like, yeah, so South America, the languages are really interesting because it's just, it's this Spanish speaking continent, except there's one Portuguese country, it's a big one, admittedly. Um, there's one French country, although it's just France, there's one Dutch country, and there's one English country. Otherwise, it's entirely Spanish. Um, and then the English one, where you can tell, look, the capital's called Georgetown, and they have a Popeyes next to the survival market, if I can find that again. Here we go. Look, it's, it's survival supermarket and Popeyes. So that's how you know it's British because we like to survive and we love Popeyes. Also, there's a Hilton here. I, d I, don't know if, I don't know if I trust that the Hilton is a Chinese restaurant. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. This is an English-speaking uh, territory. And then if you look into the demographics of that, I find something even more shocking because, one, the population has grown there at a kind of similar rate. But also, if we dive into who the population is, this country is a majority Indian. People heterogeneous, ethnic groups originating from India still are the largest, though, of all of those different uh, groups. And that is insane to me. Amerindians, the kind of native uh, people of the area, are only 10%. This is a, in a, in a way, if you want to see it that way, you kind of can't. It's like, you know, in the same way that Singapore is majority um, Chinese and some people are like, oh, so they're low to the Chinese or whatever else. This is a majority Indian place. Is I Again, you, you don't think about it, you don't see it, but it blows my mind. Like, oh, yeah. Um, you know, I guess in the same way that people look at, like, Australia and New Zealand and be like, oh, they're just white settler colonies, that's the only reason they're good friends. Why is India not really good friends with Guyana? Um, you know, and obviously it's like a different movement of why they went there. Something about, um, indentured labors, which is like a little bit of a weird thing. But still, there is an Indian country in South America, and I just feel like we don't think about it enough. And maybe we shouldn't, or maybe we should. Maybe we should be like, what the heck's happening here? Also, look at their religion. Look at this religion chart. Everyone in, in like, w what is this? Why, there is a, a significant minority of every religion you can imagine. What's what's happening in Guyana? And how how is this not something we think about more often? And I guess because it's Guyana. But that's sad. Maybe we should start thinking about it more. Speaking of things we should think about more, you ever look at Google Maps and be like, ah, here's China. China's going well. Oh, you can't highlight China because of their disputed borders. That's sad. But you ever look at China and be like, wow, look how... I think in a recent video, I was like, look how big Shanghai is across. And I was like, okay, if you want to go from one side of the city to the other, it's like 100 kilometers. And you're still in densely populated areas. Like, look at this. This is... There is a lot of people living here, as I'm sure I could prove on Street View. Except there's no Street View in China. How sad. But um, anyway, so um, one of the things uh, I was looking at, because one of the uh, flying into Shanghai Airport, or at least Pudong International Airport, flying into Shanghai makes you really see like some beautiful things. And one of those things is this bridge right here. It's like uh, it's on the approach for a lot of uh, planes. Also, look at this. Oh, isn't this beautiful? But, um, so one of the things you see is this bridge, and I was like, man, that bridge is long. Look at it on a map. This is, like, an insanely long bridge. Why is there a bridge this long? So I looked up the Donghai Bridge, and I found it on a list of the longest bridges in the world. Um, and if we remove viaducts, viaducts are, like, mostly going over land, um, which is, again, you can see how Taiwan has the second longest one. If we remove, uh, viaducts as a thing and we just go, like, with bridges, you can see how it's, like, the fifth longest bridge in the world. It's an expressway, so they, people just drive their cars in it. And it's just a very interesting thing to me that, like, oh, there is a super long bridge in the world. Look at this thing. Look, look at this. And it's, it's intense. It's, uh, it's intense. And, uh, yeah, it's just for a port. It's not even connecting, like, two densely populated areas. It's just like, oh yeah, they, they've got a port over here. Shanghai needed to expand. And because they hit their edge everywhere else, they're like, well, guess we'll just build a really long bridge. And there's something just shocking about that. Like where it's like, man, yeah, China, even though they're not running out of land, obviously no country is running out of land. Look how much they have in China still. But when you realize just how developed 
China can be because of just how many people they have. Like, you zoom into any random city, like, even, like, a third-tier city or something like that, and you're like, oh, yeah, I've never heard of uh, Jingzhou, Jingzhong. Yeah, Jing, Jingzhong. Uh, I've never heard of Jingzhong. It sounds like I'm being racist with those two words together. I'm, I swear, that is, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is how you say that, because, like, anyway. So you can see how, like, oh, yeah, I'm in this random place which has a lot of Chinese restaurants. I cannot work out why. Guys, do you know why there are so many Chinese restaurants in this in this part of the world? If, if, if someone can explain to me, I'd love to hear that. Oh, there's a Brazilian barbecue, which is Western. It's wacky. Wait, do they just label their restaurants as Chinese or Western? Like Heston cereal food? No, yeah, that's that's a wacky thing. I, I, that is that is so interesting to me. You know, I didn't realize. I would make a joke about that, but it's real. Anyway, one more thing I wanted to talk about was, did you know, um, because I was looking into the Commonwealth, because when you look at the G7, this isn't the G7. When you look at the G7, you logically think, like, what other groupings of countries are there? And one that always comes up is the Commonwealth. And well, I was looking into the Commonwealth, and I found something called the Commonwealth Realm. Realm? <laughs> the Commonwealth Realm, which, if you don't know, is a subscription service for Minecraft, where for just $4 a month, you can have your own private Minecraft server. No, so the Commonwealth Realm is a, um, is a very interesting uh, thing, because it's the Commonwealth, English-speaking countries that try to be friends or whatever, um, but all that have the same queen, the, the the monarchy, even though it's technically separate in all of them, it's Elizabeth II, it's the same British queen in all of them, so it's kind of like a personal union, in a way, between lots of very disparate countries. Countries that have a population from anywhere of 67 million to 11,000, like with Tuvalu. Um, super interesting in my opinion, but more interesting than that is just the fact that like, oh, because there's 16 countries which are functionally independent, they just all are in this personal union, it means that in theory, um, you know, like the, uh, you know, like a country, that the queen can be fighting herself because if two countries can be fighting a third country or can be fighting, you know, if, if, if two countries in that union fight each other, if Australia invades New Zealand or more realistically, if Grenada invades St. Lucia or something, the queen would be waging war on herself. And it's, it's a weird one to think about, but yeah, that's, that's the queen, head of the sovereign realms. And maybe you don't think this is interesting. So maybe we can make it more interesting by talking about referendums because of the countries uh, that do have the queen as their uh, leader, as you can see, uh, South Africa and Ghana and the Gambia decided to ditch it because of a referendum. But if you look at Tuvalu, Australia and St. Vincent, they have decided not to. And that's why Australia, you know, look, look at them. You're like, oh, who's in charge of Australia? I think you'll find the monarch is Elizabeth II, except it's the monarchy of Australia in Australia. Again, it's, it's a weird thing to talk about. And it's like, wait, so the monarchy of Australia is a different monarchy to the monarchy of... Uh, I, also, wait, I've got, I've got Canadian money right here. I've shown this point before. But here's, here, let me show you the, the British queen. This is what she looks like, as you can see. She's, she's uh, you know, kind of in her prime right here, I'd say. This is attractive queen, primo queen. Uh, whereas the Queen of Canada, man, she has she has aged some years. Oh, I picked I picked a note about her face on it. Well, you know, the Queen of Canada has is very progressively a, a guy. Who who is this, by the way? This is Sir John A. Macdonald, the Prime Minister. Well, you know, the Queen and just trust me when I say the Queen in Australia is older because they just use different pictures of her. And also trust me when I say that because they're technically different monarchies, it means if you look at the longest reigning monarchs by year. Uh, number one on the list is Elizabeth II. Number two on the list is Elizabeth II. Number three on the list is also Elizabeth II because she only became queen, because they only became independent, in 1962 or 1966 or 1973 or 1974 or 1975, 1978, 1978, 1979 and 1979, which means that Elizabeth II is not only the longest reigning queen, she's the second, third, seventh, ninth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19th uh, longest reigning queen in the world and I love that as a little fun fact because it will never happen again I used to think like oh that's a weird little thing with secession rules but as soon as Queen Elizabeth II dies there'll be the same uh, monarch leading all of these Commonwealth realms and they'll be in the same position at the same time which is sad it's it's really sad but yeah there's a fun fact also you know what? just since I was curious who's the shortest reigning monarch in the world right now the Sultan Hatham bin Tariq al Saud Sayed of uh, Oman, interestingly enough, uh, with 215 days under him. And also, the Emperor of Japan is at a year. So yeah, there's a, it's kind of interesting. And also, Philippe VI of Spain, the controversial king, who wears a suit, by the way, in his official 
uh, pictures, who's going through a lot of controversies uh, these days, I hear. Maybe you can look into those. Um, he has uh, only been in there for six years. So yeah, maybe this is all interesting to you. Maybe none of this is interesting to you. But this was a bunch of different video topics that I'd love to do more deep dives into. But every time I look into it, I just end up deeper down the rabbit hole with no way back out. And generally for a video to explain something, you want to have the full explanation of these sorts of things. And maybe that's why you understand that this video has to come to an end because this has been five or six various topics I'd love to make into a video and I didn't, instead I made this thing. Thank you very much for watching because I'll see you next time. Goodbye.